We are continuing to target independence and employability. Everything we teach should have this focus. Are we teaching skills that will assist the student in becoming independent at whatever level he can? Are we teaching the skills and social competence that will assist the student to be successful in the workplace or in a post-secondary educational setting? A student who knows many facts and can pass a vocabulary or a math test will not be successful if he cannot carry on a conversation in the work setting or figure out a budget at home. When thinking about teaching functional skills, we always remember the article by Preston Lewis that was published in the Tash newsletter in 1987. Although this is written about a young man who probably functions in a lower range, it is good to remember our higher functioning students also need training in functional, everyday skills. Let's look at the article. My brother Daryl is 19 years old and has been in school 12 years. He has never been served in a setting other than the elementary school. He has a number of years of individual instruction. He has learned a lot of things. Daryl can now do lots of things he couldn't do before. He can put 100 pegs in a board in less than 10 minutes while in his seat with 95% accuracy. But he can't put quarters in a vending machine. Upon command, he can touch nose, shoulder, leg, foot, hair, ear. He's still working on wrist, ankle, hips, but he can't blow his nose when needed. He can now do a 12-piece big bird puzzle with 100% accuracy and color an Easter bunny and stay in the lines. But he prefers music and was never taught how to use a radio or a record player or a CD player. He can now fold primary paper in halves and even quarters, but he can't fold his clothes. He can sort blocks by color up to 10 different colors, but he can't sort clothes whites from colors for washing. He can roll play dough and make wonderful clay snakes, but he can't roll bread dough and cut out biscuits. He can string beads in alternating colors and match it to a pattern on a DLM card, but he can't lace his shoes. He can sing ABCs and tell me the names of all the letters of the alphabet when presented on a card in uppercase with 80% accuracy, but he can't tell the men's room from the ladies' room when we go to McDonald's. He can be told it's cloudy or rainy and take a black felt cloud and put it on the day of the week on an enlarged calendar with assistance, but he still goes out in the rain without a raincoat or hat. He can identify with 100% accuracy 100 different Peabody picture cards by pointing, but he can't order a hamburger by pointing to a picture or gesturing. He can walk a balance beam frontwards, sideways, and backwards, but he can't walk up the stairs or bleachers unassisted in the gym to go to a basketball game. He can count by 100, or he can count by two, by he can, <laughs> he can count to 100 by rote memory, but he doesn't know how many dollars to pay the waitress for a $2.59 McDonald's coupon special. He can put the cube in the box, under the box, beside the box, and behind the box, but he can't find the trash bin at McDonald's and empty his trash in it. He can sit in a circle with appropriate behavior and sing songs and play Duck Duck Goose, but nobody else in his neighborhood his age seems to want to do that. I guess he's just not ready yet. As we teach skills, it is also important to remember generalization is everything. Teach loosely, that is, across people and across settings. Teach environmental science by recycling classroom papers and soda cans from the teacher's workroom. Have a classroom store to demonstrate economic concepts. Teach hygiene and health facts in a re relatable way. This list could go on and on. Every time you teach a skill, think about ways you can apply that skill into daily life. 